and welcome to today's video. As the title would lead you to believe, I am testing out a full face of dollar makeup for the next three days. So I've picked up a whole bunch of products from the Shop Miss A website. In particular, most of these products are part of their AOA Studio line, which is kind of their own brand. Today we're going to be putting everything on my face. We are going to be using nothing but dollar makeup sponges, dollar makeup brushes, all the dollar makeup products, and that is everything that's on my face today. There is nothing that was used or put on my face that wasn't a dollar. So my intention is, because I have a whole bunch of products here to test, is to actually do three days of this. So you are seeing the look for day one. And then we're going to do a day two and three so we can really kind of put some of these products to the test and come up with different looks and decide what of the products out there on the Shop Miss A website are worth the hype. I am very surprised with how this day has gone so far. I like a lot more of the products on my face than I dislike. So if you're curious on how I got this look here today and what products I used and what worked and didn't, you're in the right place. Just keep watching. I hope you guys enjoy this series. All right, so I've got you zoomed in here. We're going to start with face products. They don't have a ton of face base products on their website. As it relates to the AOA Studio brand, they have a BB cream and then they also have some primers. So I picked up the illuminating primer. There's a few other ones. I think there's like a smoothing one and maybe pore filling or mattifying, but I wanted to pick up the illuminating one because I just like a little glow on my skin. So this one has a really nice sort of light pink texture to it. And when I was playing around with this, swatching it, it didn't look like it had any sort of glitter particles. And that is what I tend to hate slash avoid when it comes to primers. This is definitely giving me quite the glow. It has a slight sort of powdery scent to it, but nothing that's like completely freaking me out. The only face product they have is their BB cream. So I'm gonna try this today. If it doesn't work, if it's a god awful shade or if it just completely flakes out on me or breaks my skin out by the end of the day, I will probably reach for another face product instead of this for my days two and three. But if this works, I will definitely be using this for the next three days. So I picked up the shade Fair, and then I'm going to use their Paw Paw Beauty Blender to blend this out. So they make these little AOA Studio Wonder blenders, and these are $1.55, but 55 cents of it goes to animal charities, and this is an absolutely phenomenal sponge. Here is the shade Fair. Do you think it looks a little yellow on me? But sometimes with BB creams, that they're not meant to be full coverage, so I'm a little, it can be a little more forgiving on the shade. We're just gonna work in sections here. Um, it's definitely thicker and a little more creamy feeling than even some of my other BB creams. That blended into my skin really well. I would say this is giving me a sort of medium coverage. It's not covering up my little sunspot there, but it's evening out my skin and it definitely has more coverage than I was expecting. Expecting. I was expecting this to be a little bit more like um, light coverage, like kind of a tinted moisturizer. Let's see if I can build this up at all in some areas where I want a little more coverage without it looking cakey. You might be able to get more coverage out of this as well if you use a brush. I just don't like using brushes, so I never do. Yeah, that definitely built up coverage. I would say I've got high medium coverage. It's not 100% covering that sunspot. That's always what I use as a gauge, but my skin looks really nice here. Like it's Definitely glowy from the primer underneath as well, but I think it looks really skin-like and natural there. I think my skin is really glowy and healthy. It doesn't look makeup-y. It just sunk into my skin. It blended out really easily. It definitely has sort of a baby powder scent to it, so it's not the worst offensive scent of my life, and I don't really notice it as I'm applying it, but I always like to call out if a foundation does seem to have any sort of scent to it. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with how this is looking. For concealer, I have a couple of products. So I have a stick concealer. So this is from the brand Clinista. This is in, I think, their shade Fair. I like to use stick concealers like this with my finger to kind of build up some coverage if I still have spots that are showing. So I'm gonna try that here. This color does look pretty light though. So I feel like it's not gonna be the best match for my skin, yeah, that doesn't really work. That's really kind of chalky there. I don't think this is going to work for my skin. I did pick up two under eye concealers. So one is a peach corrector. This is their Wonder Cover HD Concealer. This is the shade Peach. 
it's just way too dark on. This would work for somebody with sort of tan to deep skin as far as a color corrector goes. So um, if this works out well and I like this sort of concealer that I also have, I may consider going back and picking up a different shade in this. But I do want to try the concealer. So I have the shade Porcelain. It does appear to be a little yellow based. And we're just going to go in lightly first. I'm just going to go in in one eye and we're just going to see because one eye was playing around with this to actually film the swatches. It felt like this had a decent amount of coverage to it. So I don't want to go to, oh yeah, that has a ton of coverage. Wow. All right, blending. This is definitely a shade lighter than I typically go. I'm definitely going to end up with that very white, light under eye today. I tend to prefer ones that are closer to my skin tone versus light and bright. I'm the minority out on YouTube land, I feel like, a lot of times. But um, I feel like sometimes those lighter, brighter ones can just, you almost have to do the triangle. Otherwise, it just looks like you have white stripe underneath your eyes. I am taking this a little further down my face than I typically do, but that's really brightening and that's giving really good coverage, like really good coverage. Um, I don't usually do this, but I'm actually gonna highlight just some areas of my face because I've gone and done this sort of triangle thing underneath my eye just to make this shade work. I do think this one seems to set pretty quickly, so I think I would work in this in sections. I'm getting a little light creasing underneath my eyes here, but that happens with most of them, and it definitely is tacky. It's gonna need some setting, so let's get that done quickly. I have a couple of setting powders here. I have one that is brightening. I have another one that is called soft light, and I have another one that is translucent. So we'll try a couple of these on different days. I'm curious mostly about this brightening one and under, used underneath my eyes. And then because we are using the brushes as well today, I'm going to use the AOA Studio F19 brush. I may use this for highlight as well, but I feel like it's got a nice sort of fluff to it. So I think that is going to work well and it's a good size for setting underneath the eyes. Don't necessarily know if the powder is adding a ton of brightness, but it's definitely not darkening it either. Do think this is a little more mattifying than I normally have underneath my eyes. It'll be interesting to see if my under eyes look totally dried out by the end of the day. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look super dry or creepy or anything like that. I'm gonna do what I typically do, which is switch over to eyes when I get ready, because I like to give, I like to get my concealer on because then I can do my complete eye look before moving back into face but it also gives my skin a chance to kind of set down. I've just noticed personally that when I go in with uh, powder right away, I've got a wet tacky base, I'm adding powder onto the top, the two are melding together, just like you would expect. You're putting a powder over the top of something sticky and it really latches on hard. Whereas if I let this set for a little while, I do my eyes first, then when I go back in with powder, there may be a little tackiness still there that needs powder to kind of set it down, but it's done a lot of the setting itself and I I just, I feel like I get less layer, less cakiness. So that's how I prefer to do my sort of routine. So I'm gonna first go in with an eye primer. So they didn't have an eye primer under the AOA Studio line, but I did find one under the brand Clean Color. This is their matte eyeshadow primer. So let's go ahead and put some of this on my eyes. It does seem to have a little bit of a tint to it. It looks pretty yellow, and then as you blend it out, it almost gets lighter and almost whiter. It has sort of a silicone slip to it, but the more I move it around on my eye, the tackier feeling it becomes. All right, don't hate that. Um, I'd like to then give my eyeshadow primer just a half second to set down. So what I typically do is go in with a fiber brow gel kind of product, and I've been liking lately to run that through my lashes first, let that set while we do my eyes, and then come in and just fill in any sparse areas that the brow gel has kind of left open on my eyes. I did pick up two um, brow mascaras. One is from Santee, and it looked like a nice soft brown online, and it is orange as can be. In fact, it's like the color of my shirt. So that is going to be a pass for the week. Thankfully, I did pick up a second brow product, and this is actually from the AOA Studio. This is their Go Brow Fiber Gel, and this is the shade Medium Brown. Got a short, stubby little spoolie, but I was kind of hoping this would be like my, let's see, what is it? The one I love, the Essence Give Me Brow. This is actually doing all kinds of things for my brows. I feel like it's really volumizing my brow hairs, which is what a fiber brow gel does. Kind of like that. All right, well, 
Um, I do have some brow pencils we're gonna come back and play with here in a minute, but let's go ahead and move on to eyes. So for eyes, they have a ton of different products on their website, and we're gonna talk about quite a few of them this week, but one thing I did pick up from them was one of their palettes. So these are their magnetic palettes. It comes with nine different shadows in them. They have a mirror at the top. Um, this whole little kit is $10, so you're basically counting each one of these as a dollar shadow, and then you're getting a free magnetic palette with a mirror. I will say they also sell magnetic palettes on their own um, that also come with a mirror that are a dollar. So I picked up this one that is wood grained. Like, is that not the most beautiful little palette you have ever, ever seen? Uh, once again, mirror at the top, fits nine shadows in the bottom. They have some larger versions of these as well. So if you've been looking for affordable magnetic palettes, I would absolutely point you in this direction. I've got this very warm shirt on today, so I think I'm gonna go fairly warm. I'm gonna try and use as many of these shades as I possibly can. And then to apply the eyeshadow this week, I picked up this little brush set. So this is uh, $10 as well. It has 10 brushes and then comes with this brush holder that has a cap to kind of go on top. Um, there's a whole slew of eye brushes in here. You've also got a brow uh, product in here as well. You've got a lot of different shapes. The quality of these felt really soft. Um, this is part of their Paw Paw line. So I think this one was a little more than $10 actually, now that I say that, I think maybe 10 55 because a portion of the proceeds, once again, are going to an animal charity. So I'm gonna start with the largest blending brush here. This is their E126 brush, and I'm just gonna go in with this lightest sort of khaki shade here as a transition shade. It's been a while since I've used eye brushes besides Wayne Goss, so it will be interesting to see how I apply eyeshadow when I'm not getting to use my favorite eye brushes. So I'm just building up that shade a little bit. I went off really lightly. I went in really lightly with little color because I just wasn't sure how much color payoff. And I am one of those people that would much rather dip back in a few times and build slowly than go in and be like, oh crap, I've got so much pigment on my eyes. I must blend. So I'm having no issues with blending whatsoever. I did have to build that up a little bit nicely pressed in there, kind of remind me more of a, more of like a makeup geek or a MAC matte shadow in the sense that, you know, you dip your brush in here and you're not getting, I mean, I'm hitting this pretty hard and I'm not getting a ton of kick up here. Next, I'm gonna reach for the E130 brush, which is a smaller sort of domed blending brush. And I'm gonna go into this sort of orange shade here. And we're just gonna put that in the outer corner. Ooh, that's actually really pigmented. And I'm putting this in the outer corner where I'm laying down most of the pigment and starting to kind of blend it up and diffuse it and then in and diffuse it. And now with no extra product on, I'm just gonna go back to that first blending brush and I'm just gonna kind of blend these all together. It comes with a completely flat shader brush. This is their E131 brush. And I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of gradient from the shade to this shade. So let's go in with the lighter sort of peachy shade. I tend to like not super flat shader brushes. Me personally, I like a little bit of fluff to my eye brushes because I feel like it lays down product better. Once again, I am the dissenting opinion on YouTube with that. I just don't feel like these flat shader brushes pick up much product unless you wet them. And I don't always want to wet my eyeshadows. Uh, I'm just wiping off that brush again to get rid of product. And then we're gonna go into that copper shade there. I think what I'm gonna do rather than wetting my brush is I'm actually gonna go in with my finger. I'm gonna pick up this copper shade first and then just kind of pop it on my lid first. Yeah, that intensified that quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna wipe my finger off and I'm gonna do the same shade with this peachy shade here in the middle. And I'm just going to pop that in the inner corner. And then when I don't have a ton of, I'm just gonna press over the top to kind of blend those shades together. Form a lot better than a ton of drugstore shadows that I've used. I just wiped off that little brush I used to apply my orange shadow. That's the E130 and I'm just using that to blend out the edges here. Now I'm feeling very orange and I feel like I want some depth here in the corner. So I'm gonna take a little smaller domed brush and this is the E125 brush. And I'm gonna go pick up this 
sort of dark plummy color down here in the bottom and I'm loading up my brush pretty well and then I am going to tap this one off and I'm actually going to pounce it in the towel once as well because I like to build up these dark shades very slowly because otherwise I feel like I end up really dark really fast and I don't tend to wear super dark black heat shadows I just like a hint of depth in the outer corner and that is exactly what I got from doing that technique. I'm gonna go in with my original brush. This is the E126. I'm gonna go back into my transition shade. I do this almost every time I do my eyes. And I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that and then I'm gonna run that above to kind of bring it up a little higher and then also blend out any harsh edges that I have now from doing the whole eye look. I'm gonna use this little baby pencil brush. This is the E132 brush, and I'm gonna pick up this shade here in the middle, and I'm gonna use this as an inner corner highlight. Looks sort of like a brighter sort of champagne-y color. That's pretty. Let's go purple underneath my eyes. So let's grab this bright royal purple, and then I'm gonna use this tiny little baby pencil. This is the E134. So I'm gonna put this pretty close to my um, waterline, and then we may blend it down a little bit. This brush is a little stiffer than I thought it was going to be, so it's acting almost more like a liner brush. So I thought it was gonna have a little bit more give to it, but it's laying down product well. And then I just wiped off this little domed pencil brush, the E132, and I'm gonna go back into this latest transition shade and just buff out the lower purple shade just a smidge. Under eye shadows very far, I tend to keep them a little closer to my eye. I don't know why that is. I look at some people applying under eye shadow and it goes down so far, and I always think it looks really pretty. And then I put it on, I think it looks weird on me. So I've got a brown liner pencil. This is from Santee. This is their Super Gel Intense Liner. I think I'm gonna try and put this in my waterline because I think I'd like a little depth there. It's laying down color, but it's maybe not the most intense color ever. This might not be the best waterline pencil and I'm gonna guess We'll see at the end of the day, but I'm guessing that that is going to probably fade on me. Um, I do have a black liquid liner, but I think I'm gonna save that for another day because I've got a black eyeshadow in here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take the little angled liner brush that is a part of this little dual-ended thing. It's for your brows, but hey, they work well for eyeliner too. And I'm gonna pick up this black shade and I'm just gonna smudge it along my lash line up above. All right, so I've placed several orders that have kind of accumulated to this video series we're filming right now, and I placed my first order before AOA Studio had any sort of mascaras out there, so I picked up a couple different ones off of the website. One was a clean color frameish lash, and then an LA Colors volume lash. These were both a dollar, and then after I had placed that first order and I actually was going to place a second order, AOA Studio launched their own mascaras. So I picked up the Fat Lash Mascara and then they also had a skinny underlash mascara. So I have to be honest, these are the two I'm most curious about. So we're gonna start with those today. I didn't pick up an eyelash curler, so I'm just gonna use my own. Definitely getting lots of separation. So if you don't like mascaras that clump, this one is gonna be for you, but it's not instant bablam lashes either. This is one that I'm probably gonna need, I'm gonna guess three coats before I'm feeling really happy with it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and curl my other side and do a coat on my left, and we'll come back and add another coat to the top here. Bear in mind, I don't have the world's most amazing eyelashes. Sometimes people with long eyelashes put on mascaras and you're like, oh, that's amazing. Mascaras really have to like be a cut above, I think, to make my lashes look amazing, unfortunately. Um, it's okay, it's not the best or the worst I've ever used. It may be one where I have to come back and try it again in a few months to see. Uh, let's try the lower lashes. This is the tiniest little mascara wand I've ever seen in my entire life. All right, I have to admit, I do like the application process for the lower lash line with this skinny little wand. So if this doesn't smudge on me underneath my eyes, I might continue to use this in real life. So I have two shaping brow pencils here from the AOA Studio. I have the shade Caramel, and then I also have the shade Taupe. Oh, it's totally dried out too. E. Gosh, this taupe shade has completely dried out on me. And on top of it, it was a strange green color. All right, so I don't know about these pencils, guys. Um, even this one in 
caramel is looking a little dried out. It's definitely not as dried out as taupe. We're gonna give it a whirl. Maybe better off just leaving my brows alone with that brow gel in, because that did such a nice job. Uh, not my worst brow day of life. Don't know as if I would recommend these pencils right now, uh, especially just because they seem so dried out and this is not an old product. I mean, this is maybe a month and a half old since when I ordered it. All right, so now we're really done with eyes. Let's move on back to face. Okay, I think my camera stopped working when I was applying the blush. So I, that drives me crazy because I was trying to show you guys what was happening. So I used this blush here in the shade Sin and it's very metallic and it was kind of sitting on the top of my skin and was emphasizing all kinds of texture and I don't even have a ton of texture. So it was basically like, and imagine your skin is flat and then you've got little divots where pores are the product was sitting on the top part of the skin and hadn't gone into any of my pores. Even though I don't feel like I have a ton of them on my skin, it was making me look like I had little, almost like little dots where there was no product. So I came back in and used the same brush and just put some of this soft light or soft light powder that I'd put on my face. I picked it up on the same brush and just kind of buffed it into my skin. And at this point, I feel like I've got a blush that I'm okay with. The metallic sheen has gone down. It's been buffed into my skin. It's giving me a nice glow, but it was definitely not a blush. That was a one-step blush. I did not like how this looked on its own at all, but I do feel like this combo together is actually looking kind of pretty. So I'm curious to see if the pink blush, to, I'm gonna use this one tomorrow, I'm curious to see if this pink blush does the same thing. So there are two styles of powder highlighters out from the AOA Studio line out on the Shamasay website. So one is their Wonder Baked Highlighter. I'm gonna insert swatches because I do have six of these here. So I do wanna show you kind of what the colors are. So I'll put those up here on the screen. This is that traditional sort of thinner baked texture, right? If you've ever felt a baked eyeshadow or a baked highlighter or blush, most of the time they have a very thin consistency. Now, I wouldn't say these are scratchy. I wouldn't say these are unpigmented. They remind me a lot of the baked highlighters that come out from e.l.f. If you're familiar with those, I think it's the same thing. Although with these kind, I didn't have to rub off that top surface in order to have a highlighter show up. The other highlighter that's out there is their Halo highlighter. So it's in similar packaging and it may also be baked, but this has a much creamier, heavier consistency. And I say heavier, it does, it's not like super creamy to the point of feeling like, um, almost like it's a wet feeling, but in comparison to that very thin, slippery feeling from the baked highlighters, the halo highlighters are definitely a lot, uh, have a lot more creaminess to them. So I think I wanna try one of these today. Um, this is the halo highlighter in the shade Blissful, and I'm just gonna use a little F19 brush from the AOA Studio line, and we're gonna pick up a little bit of this. I will also say, just from swatching them, I feel like the halo highlighters are a lot more intense right out of the gate than the baked highlighters. So we'll see if that is the case here. And I definitely am getting the same sort of metallic vibe. It's, it's, it's a pretty highlighter, but I'm getting the same sort of metallic vibe that I did from the, the blushes that we just tried. So it is definitely showing up. It's a bright highlighter. It's a very pretty color, but I feel like it is emphasizing every little bump on my skin. I don't even have a ton of texture and it's making sort of bumps and pores and things show up here. So it's definitely blinding. It's a very pretty highlight, but I kind of, I think I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. So I am gonna take a little bit of that soft focus powder again, and this may tone down the highlight a smidge, but I'm just picking up some of it and I'm just gonna buff over the top of that. Okay, that is helping a little bit. I don't know how I feel about that highlighter formula. I think I wanna try the um, baked ones tomorrow and see if I feel any differently about those. Not my favorite highlight. I think I'm just leaning towards going with this since I have such a bright coppery eye and I'm, this is nice and warm, so let's give this a whirl. I feel like it's gonna be one of those ones that might settle into, uh, settle out onto my lips a little bit here. And sometimes some of these lighter, more light milky nude shades have a tendency to end up with a line right here. So I'm just gonna take my finger. It feels really comfortable. 
has sort of a light fruity scent and a bit of a taste to it, but nothing that's super offensive. Um, I think I want to put some of this diamond gloss over the top of it. This is the shade Posh. So let's kind of put a little bit, maybe we'll just start in the center of flip, see how that works. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm just gonna put it over everything. I like that. I think I would like it better with a little bit of a darker lip liner, but I didn't buy a darker lip liner, so we're kind of stuck with what we have here. But that is the final look, guys. I actually think this turned out really pretty. I'm pretty pleased with how all of my base makeup went on, but all in all, I'm actually pretty pleased with how this turned out. Hi guys, so we're on to day two now. I did want to update you that I was pleasantly surprised at how everything wore yesterday. I completely spaced on coming in here and filming, but I did notice at the end of a very, very long day, like 10 plus hours of wear, my eyeshadow was not really faded or weird or anything like that. This little BB cream impressed the absolute heck out of me. So today I'm gonna skip the glowy primer that I did yesterday and I'm just gonna use this BB cream because I do wanna see how much glow I'm getting just from that. So I'm gonna try translucent underneath my eyes today, but I did really like the effect of the other one on my skin. Most of the I actually did like this primer yesterday. I'm gonna try it again today. It's the only eyeshadow primer I bought. I could use concealer, but hey, let's give it a couple of days with this. And I like the fact that it's giving me a little bit of lightness and brightness and canceling out some of the redness and veining on my eyes. That is definitely what I prefer. So I'm going to let that kind of set down now and I'm going to do my brows. I'm going to use my Go Brow, same as yesterday. So for eyes today, I really want to play around with some plummy looks. I've got this little matte palette here from Amuse that has all kinds of sort of purpley mauve colors in there. And then for my lid, I want to try one of these baked shadows. I'm going to put it on first dry onto my eyes. This is the shade Stone. It's a really pretty lilac-y purple color. And then I'm going to probably amp it up and do it wet and just see what that looks like. So we're going to use the same little brushes we used yesterday. I think I'm going to start with their fluffiest brush, which I didn't use yesterday. This is the E127 brush. I'm going to go in with this shade right here on that fluffiest brush. And we're just going to put this above my crease. I'm not wanting to lay down a ton of color when I do this. I just like to fill this gap between my where my lid is and my brow bone. Then I'm going to take the slightly more dense, less fluffy brush, but still fluffy. It's their E126 brush. And I'm going to start building in some mauveish shades. So I think I'm going to go in with well, let's just try and build a gradient. So let's go into the shade here and let's actually pick up mauve for the first time. Let's use this angled brush and just give this a whirl. So this is the E125 brush. And then I'm gonna go in with a deeper mauve shade down here. We're just sort of slowly building the gradient Now I want to pull in some of these deeper shades, but I think I'm going to do the lid first and then apply some deeper shades to kind of build it out. Let's use this E129 brush and we're going to go in with the bake shade and we're going to just use it on its own. And then we're going to build it up with some wetness because I want to be able to show you guys what I saw when I was swatching it as far as wet and baked shadows are definitely one of those things that are kind of designed to be used wet or dry. That's actually laying down a decent amount of color. Sorry about that. Probably should have been more zoomed in as I did this eye look. But let me show you now close up without water what this looks like. All right, so I grabbed my Milani Make It Last Setting Spray and I'm switching to sort of their flat shader brush. This is the E131 brush. You're definitely getting more pigmentation and a lot more of a foiled effect, but I have to be honest, I kind of like the effect of both of them. I mean, this intensity is pretty, but this is really soft and pretty on its own as well. I really like how this is coming together. Um, I'm gonna take the E128 brush, it's this tiny little sort of fluff pencil brush, 
And I'm going to go into this sort of darker, more maroon shade here. And then I'm going to use this E130 brush and I'm just going to go back to, I think, this first light mauve shade. And I'm just going to kind of add a little bit more above the purple because I don't want to lose that pink mauve shade above the purple here. I'm going to take this little pencil brush, the E132, and that shade I just used, that light mauve, and run that underneath my eyes. Really wiped off the brush I used to kind of apply that purple shade the first time. It's sort of a fluffy paddle brush, the E129. I'm just going to go into this light cream and run that underneath my brow bone. Then I'm going to take this darkest mop here on that liner brush that's supposed to be for brows, and I'm just going to run that along my lash line. For mascara today, I'm going to curl my lashes like I normally do, and then I'm going to try the LA Colors Volume Lash Mascara. Um, LA Colors you can get in a number of different places, but they do carry some, not all, but some of their products on the Shop and Say website. So we're going to try this mascara today. Alright, it's better than yesterday, but it's still not my favorite mascara by far. That is two coats there. I have decided I want to try an inner corner highlight. This is their Relure Highlighter. This is a creamy highlighter, so it kind of feels like color pop-ish. Um, I'm probably going to do a full creamy look on my skin tomorrow. I have some cream products to try, and I may use this one tomorrow for my highlighter as well. But today I want to use this sort of my inner corner highlight. Hmm, that's what I was missing. They also have some eyeshadows that are in the same sort of packaging um, and I call their velour eyeshadows. I want to definitely try one of those tomorrow too. I want to use another one of these Glow Baby Drops. This is in the shade Super Glow, so this is sort of their pinky colored one. So I'm going to get a little bit, just like I did yesterday, a little bit on the back of my hand here. And it's definitely subtle. But I like layering highlighters a little bit. I'm going to set my face with that soft light powder just like I did yesterday. Skin is definitely tacky. This is a BB cream you're definitely going to need to set. But I didn't feel like this powder yesterday really made my skin look super matte either. So I did like that. And although it has mica in it, and mica can give some shimmer particles, I don't feel like this one has any shimmer particles. And the sheen that it imparts is really subtle. Like... This is not the world's most glowy powder, but because it's got that silicone, because it's got that mica in there, it's cutting down on some of the drying effect that you can often get from really high talc products. I'm definitely less glowy than I was yesterday, but I still feel like it's very natural looking. I'm getting a subtle glow from my skin. Uh, today I'm still going to use this palette here for my bronzer and contour. I don't think I want to do bronzer and contour today, so I think I'm actually going to mix these two on my brush. I'm going to use the same one I did yesterday, the F20 brush. I'm just going to kind of pounce in between the two of them. And then because this was so intense, I am going to bounce off the brush on a towel before I put it on my face. All right, and now for the product that I hope doesn't ruin everything. I want to try the, my other Lumi Radiant Blush. Yesterday, I didn't like the blush I tried. I felt like it was very heavy and super metallic. I ended up having to buff it out with some powder to keep it from like not looking weird. I do want to try this other shade and see if it truly is a formula or if it is just the shade I tried yesterday. So this is the shade Delicate Pink. Uh, I think it's a good color to go with today's look too, especially out of the ones I have left. So same thing, I'm just going to pick some up on this brush, like so, and then it loaded pretty heavily, so I'm going to do what I do before. I like an even coating on my brush. I'm going to pop some off here, just that way I don't get a ton on my cheek, and let's see how this goes. It's way too metallic. It's emphasizing texture. It's just not a good formula for your cheeks. And I'm sure it looks pretty on camera, but here I'm seeing like, looks like it's sitting on my skin, like I said yesterday, and then it's not going into any of my pores. So it's just sitting on top and there's nothing in my pores. All right, so that blush formula is definitely gonna be a pass for me. I'm sure it kind of looks in the viewfinder like it's looking really pretty, but it's just, 
it is definitely not the best in real life. Um, I do want to try their baked highlighter, so I'm going to try the shade Cloud. So this is different formula from yesterday. This one is lighter, kind of has that very lightweight sort of silky feel that you get from a lot of baked powders. And then I'm just going to use the same brush I used to set my under eyes, the F19 brush. haven't really used this brush yet. This is an F13 brush. Probably could be a good contour brush. I'm just going to buff this into my skin though because I do feel like it's sitting on top of my skin. Hmm. I don't know if I can properly judge that because I feel like the blush has kind of crept up and so I'm having a hard time seeing exactly what's causing what amount of texture on my skin. But I am seeing like right here. Yeah, it's just, it's not the most flattering highlight. It's not bad, but it's not my favorite. And then last product I want to try today is their Pop Lip. So these are fairly new. This is the shade City Girl, and this is kind of a soft lip lacquer kind of thing. I did try this on when I first got it, and I have to admit I kind of like the formula. So it comes with a doe foot applicator. It's kind of got the consistency of a NYX Intense Butter Gloss. So it's definitely pigmented. It's not necessarily a layering gloss. This would definitely cover up whatever you put on underneath. I, I think I would consider this to be a lip lacquer or like a really intense gloss because, or intensely pigmented gloss, but it doesn't feel sticky or heavy. It's really smoothing like, I mean, this isn't gonna last the longest, but this is a really comfortable lip product. It also doesn't have any certain distinguishable scent I mean, it's got a subtle taste, but nothing offensive, nothing chemically. But for a dollar, this is an amazing lip product. I'm really, really impressed with this. I love how it looks on my skin or on my lips. It's not settling into lip lines. It's not like going every which way. It's got enough grip that I don't feel like it's going to slide all over the place. So that is day number two done with makeup. Um, I think this look is really pretty and I don't think you would guess that any of the um, eyeshadow or products on my skin look like a dollar. Like I don't feel like I look at myself and think, ooh, you have cheap makeup on. Hi guys, so today is day three of testing some makeup. I've gone ahead and applied some things that are going to be consistent from days one, two, and three. So just real quickly, what is on my face right now is the BB cream that we've used the last couple of days. I also went ahead and put on the illuminating primer again this morning because I wanted to give that another day since I could. I also have gone ahead and put on concealer underneath my eyes, the shade that we've been using this whole time. And then to set my under eyes, I actually went in and used the setting powder in this palette here. Um, I do think this one is maybe a hair more drying than the loose powders I've tested, but it's not awful as far as powders go. So I did want to call that out. And then I've also gone ahead and put on some of this fiber brow gel in my brows. I'm really liking this one, to be totally honest. And then the other thing I have on, ah, yes, this. So I have on the eyeshadow primer also on my lids. I have a little bit of redness on my lid today, um, but that is due to some allergies. I petted my cat that touched my eye. And so my eye got a little bit of red and irritated, but I did want to call that out just in case you guys are like, wait a minute, are you having an allergic reaction to the makeup? I'm not just my usual cat allergies. I love them, but I'm massively allergic to them. For today, the primary thing I want to test is their Velour eyeshadows. So these are a creamy eyeshadow formula. They have more of a mousse type consistency, so less ColourPop, more J-Cat. What are those ones that just came out? Uh, I'll put it up here on the screen. That consistency reminds me a lot of this formula, so it's definitely a lot softer to touch. It's creamier, you can move it around. I think I referred to the J-Cat ones as a little bit frosting like I would say this kind of feels the same way and then I think to kind of balance things out I'm gonna play around with this matte palette this is from Santee this is their color number four and I think it's got some more cool tone shades in here that I think would be good and it's got a brow bone shade I may pull in this other Santee quad that I have this is color number six uh, to use this black um, as a liner potentially. To start out, I'm gonna take that fluffy brush from the Shop Miss A set. This is their E126 brush, and I'm just gonna pick up this taupe shade here to kind of use as a transition shade. Just building this up, I would say it is building 
it's not super pigmented out of the gate, but I'm not noticing any sort of weird patchiness. It's just a nice soft taupe shade. I do think I want to build up a little bit more depth though. So let's grab a smaller fluffy brush. I grab the E130 brush and I'm going to actually just, I think I'm going to mix these two because I don't want to go straight dark as this right away. So I think if I bounce between the two of them, I can probably get, just tap off my brush, a color that is comparable to what I want here. All right, now that I've got some taupey transition shades down, I want to use this really, really hopeful for this, this swatched beautifully. Uh, let's see, this is just one of those dollar brushes. This is their E113 brush. It's just a flat shader brush. I might try this with my finger, but I think I want to start with a brush and just see. Sometimes that's, I ended up liking a brush with the moussey texture of the J-Cat ones that I tried. So yeah, I don't feel like it's picking up very much product on this brush at all. If you can see there, it's just like a little spleck of it. Sometimes brushes don't pick up cream shadow as well. Sometimes they do. So this is the E131 brush. It came with the little pink kit I've been trying. Brushes do not work to pick this up. I have these little foam applicators here. I do keep a pack of foam applicators for applying color pop shadows when I don't want to use my finger. I know not all of you guys like to use your finger. So I would like to find a method to apply a shadow without a finger. So let's use one of these little foam applicators. I will say I picked up too much product on that sponge applicator and I did get kind of a chunk of fallout here, but I just dusted it away. I'm going to um, go back to this little brush that I had used to kind of lay down the color. And while this is still slightly tacky, I'm hoping it hasn't set yet, I'm gonna blend out the edges. It's got a nice shine to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick up with my finger. Oh yeah, that's, wow. Okay, I actually think this is one where you guys can stand to use your finger. Finger is definitely giving me the smoothest application, which, listen, with cream shadows, sometimes your finger is kind of the best application method. It's really pretty foiled metallic look. This is definitely my kind of like favorite light taupey shade. I'm gonna give this a chance to set down before I add any more powder to it just to see how it works. In the meantime, I think I wanna put this purpley shade underneath my eye and I think to do that, I'm gonna try first just using the very tip of this sponge applicator since that seemed to pick up product well for the lid. I'm curious to see if I can get just the tiny teensiest amount of this color underneath my eye with this foam applicator. I don't typically do this. worked. I am going to take a little blending brush though. This is the E132 little tiny fluffy brush here and I'm just going to buff out the edges while this is still flexible. That worked. Let's just live on the edge. Let's try the little pencil brush here. This is that little pointy one. I didn't love a lot but it might work to pick up this shadow. Yeah, that worked. I had to dip back into it a couple of times, but it's definitely more precise. The same thing, I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit. It feels like it's set down. I don't, I think at this point we could add a little bit more depth. So I think what I'm gonna do is come in with this little tiny fluff brush. This is the E128 from here. Let me wipe this off, it's got a little bit of color on it from yesterday. And I'm gonna go into this deepest taupe shade here in the corner. And then like I do almost every single day, I'm going back to my original largest fluffy brush and my first transition shade, just picking up a little bit more of that and then running that along the top of my eye look just to diffuse it out. For mascara, I didn't care for the LA Girl one yesterday, just a heads up. I, I think you guys probably saw it during the application process. I just felt like it wasn't doing much for my lashes at all. So we're on to our third and final mascara. This is their Framish Lash Aloe Vera Mascara. So in theory, it's supposed to be healthy for your lashes. So we're just gonna go in and curl like we do every day and then apply that. It's definitely more length than volume. So let's see if we can build up some volume here. 
is I end up getting it all over. So now it looks like I've got black liner on it and I don't, so that's fun. Well, I'm gonna let this set for a second and then we're gonna try and go in with some brushes and try and clean up the mascara that's ended up all over my eyes. For inner counter highlight, while we're waiting for this to kind of settle down a little bit, um, let's actually use this. So I'm not gonna have a chance to use a lot of these on my eyes because I just have prioritized different things I've purchased over it, but this is the Sante Center Stage Miracle uh, Baked Eyeshadow. It has a really light sort of white pearly shade here. I think I'm gonna pick up some of that. I'm just using that E132 brush. This is actually a really great size for getting into that inner corner. And I want kind of a bright white inner corner highlight today, and that is giving it to me. So for my eyelids themselves, I don't really see a great way to recover the fact that I've got so much mascara right above my lash line, so. All right, well, I wasn't planning on wearing liner today, but this is forcing me to use a liquid liner, and I have one, so this is the AOA Studio Liquid Liner. This is in the shade Black. Uh, let's see, it is a tiny, tiny, tiny little um, brush tip applicator, so usually I would do mascara after I did this, so we're gonna have to try and work around lashes. This is gonna be, this is not my favorite way to try and go and apply liner, but let's give it a whirl. All right, all things considered, that wasn't awful. I wish I had planned this liner before I had done my eyeshadow, or before I had done my mascara. It does seem to be one that is going to not dry down matte. It's a little bit shiny still, if you guys can see that there, and it does look like it's mostly dried. All right, so I have some cream products I wanna to apply to my face. I haven't set my face yet, so as I've mentioned in past days, this is still a little bit tacky, but I have a little contour stick I wanted to try. So they have the AOA Studio Sculpt FX. This is their contour stick. This is in the shade Fawn, which is a really sort of gray shade. Now, typically when I put this on, I will buff it out with a brush. I don't really have a brush that I have from this AOA line that is gonna to work to buff this out right now. Um, I'm gonna use, try and use maybe my finger or my beauty blender here and just see how it blends out. But I'm gonna go in with this contour shade just here on my face. And it seems to be a really good cool toned shade. Just using my finger here because I think that may be the most precise. It seems to blend out pretty well. I mean, it might be a little patchy through here. But once again, I probably would have reached for a certain kind of brush to blend this out that I just don't have in my arsenal right now. So all things considered, I would definitely try this again. So similar to the velour eyeshadow we put on, they have a velour highlighter. I picked up one. This is sort of a purpley, silvery shade called Crazy. I think I'm just gonna pick this up with my finger. It's picking up a lot. So I think I'm gonna tap off my finger on the back of my hand. Just so I have a little less product on my actual finger. And then let's kind of tap this in. That's pretty. Like that's really pretty. It's really, really intense, but it blended into the skin really well. There's absolutely, there's absolutely no glitter particles. It's just pearly, like, hmm. When I'm tapping my finger in, you can almost see like it's lifting up into little peaks. Um, so it definitely picks up a lot with your finger. Maybe a fluffy brush would work better. Um, I'm just gonna use this F19 brush. I'm just gonna very lightly press into here. And you can see it's getting a lot of divots from even when I'm pressing in with here. So it's a very light frosting-like texture. I don't feel like I'm getting quite as much shine that way though as I did with my finger. So I'm just gonna even that out and put a little bit more on with my finger. Seems like both of these products are setting down pretty well. Now, when I use cream products like this, unless it is a really good cream to powder, like I would consider ColourPop to be one that turns completely into powder very, very quickly. Um, I will usually do this step and then set my whole face with some powder. So that is what I'm going to do here. I'm gonna to continue to use this soft light powder that I've been using this week on my face and then the same giant fluffy brush, the F12 brush. So we're just gonna pick up some powder and we're just gonna press this into the skin. 
Um, I will say though that as I've added this powder, I've probably diminished the highlight a little bit. I mean, it's still there, but it's not as pronounced. Like, shoot, I probably should have avoided powder in that area. All right, I am making an arbitrary decision here. This might be a bad one because I can't quite test just the cream highlighter below, but um, the last powder highlighter from the AOA Studio line is one that just released. This is their Perfect Pressed Highlighter. I got the shade Eris. Um, it seems to be a white shade here. We've tried the other two powder highlighter formulas from AOA the last two days and I've not been impressed, so I may be ruining my look here, but I'm just gonna pick up that F19 brush. I wiped it off really, really well. And let's try some of this highlighter and see if it is as bad and metallic as the last ones have been. Seems to be just a regular sort of creamy powder highlighter though versus the baked ones and it's a lot smoother. All right, I would try this one again for sure and I will probably want to try this one again for sure because I feel like I may have hosed this one up completely by putting powder over the top of it. But I actually like how my highlighter looks today and that has not been the case for the last two days. So there is that. I am just going to use this palette again, mix the two shades together, add a little bit of bronze. And then for blush, I ended up with three random brands that all kind of looked the same to me. I ended up with this Santee Blush Me shade, which was a little bit more coral. I ended up with this Prisma um, one that was a little bit more pinky toned, but still had coral. And then I have one from Amuse Cosmetics, which is a little bit more... I don't know, raspberry colored. And I think this is the one I wanna use for today. It also seems to be the one that has the least pigment. The other two seem like, oh, holy heck, you put your brush in there and you're going to have clown cheeks. But that's really pretty. So I will tell you though, I mean, that's a nice blush shade. It's giving me a nice rosiness to my cheeks, but I've literally gone boop, boop, boop picked up a ton of product all over my brush and then almost pounced it off like five or six times in my towel to make sure that I don't have as much on there and then lightly come on here and add a blush. My lip options I feel like are a little limited here. I may end up doing a lip and then coming back and taking it off and trying a different lip. So there's three lips I haven't tried yet. So I have two matte liquid lipsticks here from Shop from the AOA Studio line. I've got a metallic sort of purpley shade, which might actually look pretty today. I have a very cool tone shade, kind of reminds me of, what is it? Dolly, I think, from ColourPop. Um, and this is just their regular matte line. And then I have something called a Madly Matte Lip Gloss from Clean Color, which is probably my most neutral, but it's kind of a dark plummy brown color. Um, for the time being, I think I'm gonna start with this metallic one because I also wanna try out the liner and that'll give me a chance to do that with you guys on camera. So this is the Studio Wonder Liner. It is a traditional pencil liner. I picked up the shade Tease. So I think I'm gonna outline my lips only and then come in and add that color on top. That's a nice liner. I I am quite impressed with this. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna come in with the shade here in Unicorn. All right, so I know not everyone is a fan of metallic lipstick. I have to admit, this is a color I actually don't mind being slightly metallic because I think the shift is kind of fun. All right, so that is the final look for today. Um, I'm curious to see how all of this wears. I definitely think of the skin products I've tried today is probably the day my face looks the best. I've liked the BB cream quite a bit, but I've really disliked the highlighters and blushes I've used the last couple of days. So I feel like the blush is a lot better today as, as is the highlighter. The eyes look really pretty. I am really hopeful that this shadow lasts on my eyes and doesn't fade or crease or like separate on me in a weird way because right now I think that is a really beautiful reflective taupe. All right guys, it's a few hours later. I've had some lunch. I had some taquitos with some salsa, so maybe a little bit of grease. This lip liquid lipstick is doing pretty much what every lip liquid lipstick does for me, which is wear off around the middle of my lip, wear off in the corners of my mouth. I mean, if I keep my lips together, 
it doesn't look all that bad, but the minute I start talking, it just looks kind of janky. So um, not the longest wearing liquid lipstick of life, but to be honest, probably not the worst either. I do wanna try the other liquid lipstick though, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and put the other one on. Curious about what I just used to take off that liquid lipstick it is this e.l.f. Um, it is a liquid lipstick remover. It's like three bucks, I can find it at pretty much every place, CVS, Target, Walgreens, anyone who carries a decent display of e.l.f. products seems to have this out there. And it is amazing. It's just kind of like a clear gel. It has kind of a sugary taste to it. And you put a thin layer over your lips, rub your lips together and wipe it off with a tissue and everything comes off. It's amazing. I love this. So let's go ahead and go back in with this second color. This is just a pure matte color, not a metallic liquid lip. So it's a very purpley, cool toned shade. It went on really evenly and smoothly, very opaque, no patchiness or streakiness. So the application process of this is really nice. I do think it takes a little bit to set down. It feels slightly tacky, but less tacky than the metallic one I just did. I think it's set. Let's go ahead and do a kiss test. Nothing came up here on my hand, so that is definitely pretty transfer proof.